Hello everyone, Dr. David Perlmutter here. Today I would like to talk about body fat. And I'm going to talk about it in context of what it may be associated with. In fact, we're going to look at a really interesting new study that just came out. But I want to just emphasize the point that we're trying to make, or at least what the research is trying to tell us, and that is that we have to look upon body fat as representing much more than simply a storage depot of energy or calories uh, for the winter time when we don't have access to food. Uh, we tend to think of body fat as simply representing cells that can be uh, available to us in terms of their contents to use as fuel, but it's far more important than that. Body fat is actually an organ and really uh, helps to feed back in terms of regulating our metabolism. And perhaps more importantly these days in the context of chronic degenerative conditions, body fat really is a powerful source of inflammatory chemicals and that's really relevant when we recognize that inflammation is indeed the cornerstone of all of our chronic degenerative conditions including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, coronary artery disease, diabetes. The study that I want to look at is one that looks, uh, evaluates the relationship between body fat and quite specifically where that body fat is located and risk for declining gray matter in the brain. Let's have a look at the study. Association of body mass index and waist to hip ratio with brain structure. And this is a study that appeared in the journal Neurology, again, one of our most well-respected neurology journals, February of 2019. And here's what they did. They took a group of close to 10,000 individuals whose average age was 55, about half and half men and women. They looked at a couple of uh, markers, body mass index, which we'll talk about in just a moment, as well as waist to hip ratio. And then they looked at these numbers, these measurements, in the context of uh, looking at brain MRI scans. Now let's first just compare what it means uh, to talk about BMI versus waist to hip ratio. Body mass index is a calculation uh, that is based upon height and weight. So it is weight divided by height in meters squared, weight in kilograms, uh, and it really doesn't um, incorporate where body fat might be look, uh, located in contrast to the waist to hip ratio, which is, as you would expect, a measurement of your waist divided by the measurement of your hip. The larger that number, the larger the belly is in reference to a bony structure, which is basically your hips. And here's what they found in looking at several age uh, categories that really it doesn't matter whether you're 40 to 50 all the way up to 61 to 70, that there is a decline in the um, size of the brain, the gray matter volume, you see that's indicated on the left side, uh, in comparison to uh, body mass index. Higher the body mass index, basically the smaller is the brain, and particularly the gray matter of the brain. But when we look at this information uh, in looking at whether a person has fat around the belly or not, first let's look at no fat around the belly. And that is a uh, situation called no central obesity. And I think that as body mass uh, index increases, moving to the right of the screen, to the obese category as characterized by body mass index greater than 30, you see a progressive loss of gray matter, again, on MRI scans, scans of the brain. But when there is central obesity, when there is uh, uh, significant amounts of fat around the middle, then this relationship between higher body mass index and shrinkage of the brain becomes even more profound. So it's really telling us that the location uh, of the body fat is really uh, quite crucial. And as the authors indicated, visceral fat or fat around the middle is thought to be a major site for, as we discussed in the uh, opening, inflammation, inflammatory cytokine production, and has been linked to other vascular risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, that may be important mechanisms for brain atrophy, shrinkage of the brain. Subcutaneous fat in the hips and legs which is not fat around the middle, has been linked to healthier metabolic profiles. It may provide partial support for the concept of metabolically healthy obesity. In other words, having 
a higher body mass index not necessarily being a threat if that's not associated with a lot of fat around the middle. Indeed, our data suggested that obese participants with a BMI greater than 30 without central obesity had a gray matter volume similar to that of overweight participants. And they conclude by saying that previous work has hypothesized uh, this association between obesity and uh, gray matter, specifically in areas involved in behavioral control, reward processing, and homeostasis. What that means is perhaps the shrinkage of the brain is what, uh, is, is what causes loss of control of things like appetite. Another way of looking at it uh, in contradistinction in distinction to, I believe, what is the main finding of the study, and that is basically that higher amounts of fat around the middle increase inflammation and are associated with increased shrinkage of the brain. So this is very interesting information, isn't it? Again, it uh, tells us a couple of things. First of all, where body fat is located is critical. Uh, that having body fat around the middle seems to be a much bigger risk in terms of, uh, in this case, a shrinkage of the brain over time. And beyond that, uh, looking at, I think, focusing on the important role of inflammation as it relates to the brain. So I hope you uh, got something out of this information. We'll talk soon. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.